Hello and welcome to this tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel. This is recorded using the version you'll find in Office 365, but whether you have the standalone Office 2019 version or pretty much any version from 2007 onwards, you'll find many of the things shown here very familiar, if not exactly the same. So we'll close Excel and we'll start from the beginning. And on my desktop I've got a shortcut here, which I can double click on, or if I go to the taskbar, you'll find the Excel logo there, white X on a green background. And if I just click that once, that will open Excel. I'm not going to worry about anything else apart from the highlighted option here, which is blank workbook. So if I just click on that once, we open Excel with the blank workbook or worksheet ready to start the spreadsheet. And as you can see, cell A1 is already selected for me. And if you're curious to know what the cell reference is that you have selected, if you look above where I am at the moment, there's a thing called a name box, and that tells you exactly what cell reference you're in. So if I just click into another cell, in this case, I've clicked into B2, C3, B4, and so on. I'll come back to cell A1, and I'm going to create a spreadsheet for a small business, and it's going to be called Fruit Supplies, which will give you a little bit of a clue as to what we'll be selling. I'm going to press the Enter key on the keyboard and press Enter one more time to move down to row three. I'll then press the right arrow key on the keyboard and move across to B3. And here I'm going to type in the word January. So it's going to be recording my sales for that month. I want to record the sales for the next two months as well. And here I can use a little bit of Excel trickery. Just put the mouse on the bottom right of that cell and when you get that black cross, hold the mouse button down and drag across. And as I drag there, you will see, I hope, the words February and March appear. And if I release the mouse button, those words drop into those two cells. So Excel has correctly guessed that as I dragged the selection across there, I wanted a sequence of months. And in this case, February and March have automatically gone in there. There are lots of other automated features built into Excel. And I'll explore a few of those in future tutorials. I'm going to add a few more labels in now. So if I click onto cell A4, and you can navigate around either using the arrow keys or simply click into the cell that you want to work with. And here I'm going to type in the word apples, I'll press the enter key to come down to cell A5, type in their bananas, press the enter key again, and here type in oranges. You can use the backspace key on the keyboard to delete and correct anything that you might be entering into a cell. So I'll press enter one more time. And finally, I will enter the word total. Next, I'm going to click into cell B4. And remember, you can always check the cell reference with the name box if you need to. And here I'm going to enter the values or the sales figures for my fruit. And for apples in January, I sold 150 pounds worth. I'll use the arrow key here, just come across to February and type in there 175. Right arrow key again, type in there 195. And now I can simply click into the cell for bananas, the first one in B5, type in 195. Again, just use the arrow keys, 225. And finally come to March and type in there 250. And this time I'll press the Enter key and then use the arrow keys to move back to cell B6 and type in there my figures for oranges, 225 for January, again use the right arrow key, 250 for February, and finally for March, 295. Now I'm just actually going to delete those three entries and do it again and show you something slightly different. So if I select cells B6 through to D6, just click and drag across there, press delete on the keyboard, and again, come back to cell B6. I'm going to retype those figures, but use a different key. So if I type 225, this time I'm going to press the tab key on the keyboard. It has the same effect. It moves me to the next cell on the right. And again, type in 250, tab again, and now type in 295. And this time when I press the enter key, what it would normally do is actually go to D7, the cell below. But when I press the enter key this time, because I use the tab key, Excel jumps me back to the beginning of the next row or the first blank cell ready for me to continue my data entry if I had a longer list. And we'll look at all these shortcuts and smart ways you can enter data in Excel in future tutorials. But for now, I'm going to come across and click onto cell E3 
And I'm going to enter one more label here, also total, and press the enter key to come down to the next row. And here I want to add up all my Apple sales from January to March. And I'm going to do that by using one of Excel's shortcuts. And if I come across to the right side of the toolbar there, you will see this editing section. And the top left button there is labeled auto sum. And whenever you put your mouse pointer over these labels, by the way, you'll get a, a box pop up explaining what the button does, if you're not sure. And if I click on that and come back to the table, you'll see I now have a formula in that cell. It says equal sum and then between brackets or parentheses, if you prefer, B4 colon D4. In other words, add up all the values from cell B4 to D4. And if I just press the enter key, the calculation is entered into that cell. If I come back to that, just to show you very quickly, you can see the formula in the formula bar there. And obviously the spreadsheet shows the result. So I'll do that one more time. Click in next cell down, go across to the right side of the screen, click on the auto sum button. And as an alternative, I can click on this tick here, which is equivalent to pressing the enter key. And the only difference you'll notice is that instead of moving down to the next row, the highlighted cell remains where the calculation is. Now to do all these calculations one by one, it can be a bit tedious. So what I'm going to do there is delete my second calculation and show you how I'd normally do it. That is to select the first one, just put the mouse pointer at the bottom right of the cell and click and drag down to the next two rows. And there you will see the total values go in and you see the calculation in the formula bar as updated to account for the fact that it's moving to a different row. And finally, in terms of the calculations here, I'd like to complete my total row, which is row seven. And here I'm going to select all the cells from B7 across to E7. Again, just click and drag across. And with those still highlighted, go across again and in the editing section, click on the auto sum button and you'll see all the totals magically go in to the table. OK, so I've got my table completed with labels, sales figures and calculations. But I want to make it look a bit more interesting to the viewer. So I'm going to apply some formatting. And the first thing I'm going to do here is actually select cell A1 across to E1, which is covering the entire width of my table. And in the alignment section on the toolbar, I'm going to click on the merge and center button there. And you'll see that merges all those five cells together and centers the title. I'm going to make it bigger as well. And I can do that in the font section using the increase font size button. And if I just click that a few times, you will see my fruit supplies label gets a bit bigger. And I can also click on the B for bold button there. And I can make it stand out even more by going to the background color option here where the paint bucket is. Click on the drop down and choose some suitable background color. I also want my labels on the spreadsheet to stand out a bit more. So if I click and drag from B3 across to E3, there's my top row of labels. And I can also hold down the control key on the keyboard and select at the same time all the labels in column A. And again, here I might go and click on the B for bold and perhaps increase the font size. This time I'll use that drop down option there and just change it to size 12 instead of 11, make them stand out a bit more. And I'd like all my total values as well to stand out as bold figures. So again, select in this case from B7 to E7. Again, hold the control key down and I can select everything from E4 down to E6 as well. Just click the B for bold, click away and you'll see the results. The next thing I'm going to do here is apply some currency formatting to make it clear that we're talking about money and not just quantities. So if I select all the values in this case from B4, click and drag down to cell E7 and this time come to the number section and you'll see there's a little button there on the left hand side. If I click on the drop down, we have in this case English currency, US dollars and the euro. If I just click on that top one, make sure that's pounds are applied. I also don't want any decimal places here. So if I go back to that number section, there's a couple of options here. The first one is to increase decimal places. The second one is decrease. So if I click on that a couple of times, then that will get rid of those decimal places. Again, just click away to see the result. And one more thing that you don't have to do, but I sometimes like to do it to make the table easy to read. And in this case, if I select everything from E7 
back up to A3, and that's the entire table. Again, go to the font section, and in the middle there you will find a drop-down arrow. If I click on that, you'll see we have all the border options. And I'm going to click on the All Borders button. If I click on that. I think it just makes things a bit easier to read, but you might prefer to not bother doing that. And I might also apply colour formatting to my label row there. And again, in column A, just hold down the control key, make sure all those cells are selected. And I can choose this, perhaps a light green colour there. Click away and there's my final table. Now reading figures on a table, it might be easy enough, but it's even easier to understand the figures when they're represented visually. And of course, Excel has a way of doing that using charts. I'm going to create a chart that includes all the sales figures from January through to March, but I don't want the total figures included. So all I need to do here is simply select everything from cell A3 down to D6, and then come back up to the toolbar, and this time click on the Insert tab, and come across to the chart section, and you'll see recommended charts there, but also individual chart types. And I want to use a column chart, so I'm going to click on the column chart drop down. Those are all the options. And I'm just going to choose this very first 2D clustered column chart. Click on that. And there is the chart. You'll see there when I put the mouse over the chart, get a four way arrow. I can just click and move that into position like so. You'll notice that the title of my chart says chart title, which is not very imaginative. So I might just click on that. And once I've done that, I can select the text already in there, just click and drag. And I can actually put in there anything I want. Whoops, try typing it correctly. Call it fruit supplies. You can just click away from everything. Now, if you don't like the colors on the chart, you can change them quite easily. For example, I might decide that uh, blue is not a good representative color for apples. And if I point to that, right click, you'll see I have the fill options here. I can click on the drop down and perhaps choose this uh, green color. I'll do the same thing with bananas. Again, right mouse click, choose the fill, and choose a yellow. And for oranges, well, fairly obviously, I might want something orangish colored. And there we have a colors a bit more representative, but I'm still not happy with that uh, bananas color. So let's right click on that again, go to fill, and I'll just choose this bright yellow. There we go. And uh, I haven't seen many bananas that color, but it's close enough. Now, one more thing I want to show you here is how the data is all linked in Excel. In other words, if we update some of the figures, we want to have the calculations update automatically. And we also want to have the chart update automatically as well. So to illustrate that, what I'm going to do is go to the apples figure for January. Just click on that. And I'm going to change that to a much higher value. You will see three things change on the table and also the chart update as well. So you will see the total for January change, the total for apples change, and the grand total at the bottom right there. And you'll also see that green bar there for apples in January. You'll see that jump up as well. So let's go back and change that figure and keep an eye on those changes that I mentioned. So I'll just type that in, press the enter key. So there we see those three total values on the table change. And of course the chart has updated to reflect the change on the table. That's just an overview of some of the things you can do with Excel. We've created a simple table there, entered some labels, some figures, created the calculations and added a basic chart as well. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope you've learned a few things there and it's going to give you more confidence in using Excel. There'll be more tutorials coming up focusing on different aspects of Excel that will hopefully turn you into an Excel expert. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.